Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here as we are uh, taking our next step every, every day, taking it, our next step in our relationship with God. We're not running a marathon today. We're not doing a sprint. We're just taking a, an intentional step forward. And uh, you'll notice that I am, I'm not in my office. I'm, I'm not in, my, my, in front of my computer. I am up at a pastor's and wives retreat with my wife, Adrian, and kids. Uh, with Venture Church Southwest. This is part of the association that we're, we're part of at Palm Valley Church. They actually helped us get started 22 years ago. So glad to be up here with some, some pastor friends uh, and uh, just get get away for a couple of days, get recharged and, and help pour into some others as well. So we are continuing our study in uh, over the kings of, of Israel and Judah. And actually yesterday we wrapped up with Israel because Israel was, was captured. <laughs> It was uh, it was taken away, and now we're just looking at the, the line of Judah, and we're gonna flip back over to Second Chronicles. So we're in Second Chronicles chapter 29. We're gonna look at the next king, and if you remember the previous king in Judah uh, was Ahaz, Ahaz, who was wicked in the Lord's sight, uh, who um, followed uh, the the customs of the kings of Israel, of Ahab worshipped Baal. Uh, but now we're going to see his his son Hezekiah take uh, take control. Now you just have to know Hezekiah. You you might have heard of someone named Hezekiah, so this gives you a little bit of a clue that he's a good guy. Uh, we don't name our kids after bad kings; we name them after good kings. So Hezekiah, uh, it starts off here. It doesn't pull any punches. It says very first sentence about Hezekiah in Second Chronicles chapter twenty nine. It says Hezekiah was twenty five years old when he became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem for twenty nine years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. All right, so he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. What exactly was that? What did he do that was pleasing in the Lord's sight? Well, he's a contemporary of the last king of Israel. So as he is stepping into this role, he's seen what Israel is going through, being invaded by the Syrians, taken away as captives, new people were placed in here. Uh, so this is going on just just outside of his borders. Um, and the, it says here, the very first month of his reign, this is what he does. It says the very first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and the Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, listen to me, you Levites, purify yourselves and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all the defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of our Lord. They abandoned the Lord um, and his dwelling place and they turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors to the temple's entry room and snuffed out the lamps. They stopped burning incense and presenting burnt offerings at a sanctuary for the Lord. They even got rid of the utensils to give away his, his tributes. So he set them to work. He's like, guys, get this place cleaned up, get it purified, get it sanctified. Let's get ready to worship. So they did. They went right to it. Uh, I don't know if you cleaning day. Every, every once in a while at the Nunez house, we'll have like a, an all out cleaning day. You know, there's chores to go on, right? There's a little, you know, upkeep on the house. But there'll be a, a Saturday about once a month where we say, all right, guys, all hands on deck. We're doing a deep dive. It had been more than just a week or a month. Uh, since there had been a deep dive on the temple. Uh, it had been broken down. It had been defiled. It had not been used. There's got to be dirt and grime and dust and all kinds of, of, of other things in there. And it says it took them eight days to clean the temple just to get to the point of the inner temple. Uh, and then another eight days on the innermost part. But 16 days later, they're ready to go. And they tell Hezekiah that it's, it's coming. Hezekiah brings all the people together brings all the people together and they begin making sacrifices. And one of the most important things is they make a sin sacrifice. Uh, it says, so they killed the bulls and the priests took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next, they killed the rams and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally, they did the sale, the same with the male lambs. The male goats for the sin offering were brought before the king and the assembly of the people who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goats as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar to make atonement for all the sins of Israel. They admitted that we've been wrong. We've rebelled against God. Uh, we have sin here we need to confess. That's what they do by the laying on of hands on the, the goats. They sacrifice it and they're getting a fresh start before God. And then they opened it up to, to worship. 
Uh, they had the musicians playing. They had songs being played. And then they invited the people to make their sacrifices. People brought so many sacrifices. They didn't have enough Levites to do all the sacrifices. So they had to bring some of their family members who were of the tribe of, of Levi, who were descendants of Aaron. They had to purify them. They had to consecrate them so that they could help out with it. It was just a huge, well, I think what we would use the term, a revival taking place. And not only had Hezekiah uh, turned to God, he brought the people along well. That's what leaders do. That's what spiritual leaders do. Being a spiritual leader isn't just about being uh, honoring God yourself. It's leading others to honor him as well. We have the opportunity to be spiritual leaders in, in all different environments in our life in our home life, in our work life. Maybe you lead, lead a ministry team. It's one thing, and it's an important thing. I, I'm not disregarding this to spend time with God every day, to grow in your relationship with him, to take one step closer. But who are you leading along as well? We're all called to lead others, to be spiritual leaders. Here we see an incredible example, like the, like the extreme example here with Hezekiah, bringing a whole nation along. But who it is it in your life that God's asking you to lead along? Who is it that you could be poured, pouring into to bring and help them take their next step forward? I think there's someone in, in each and every one of our lives that we can do that with. Let's be intentional. Let's live that out today. All right, we're going to learn more about what Hezekiah does because this, this is a high point in, in Judah. Uh, he's one of the, the last really good kings. He's going to go through a kind of a downturn, a little bit of an upturn, and then it's heading downhill until captivity. So we're kind of nearing the last uh, you know, couple weeks here of, of reading through these passages. But we're going to stop there today. We're going to pray. Um, I'm going to enjoy this, this beautiful weather up here. Sorry, sorry to make you guys jealous. I'm up here in, in Prescott in the Pines. It's, it's beautiful outside. So once we wrap up, I'm going to go out for a walk. I'm going to enjoy a little bit of nature. So let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for today. God, we thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for your uh, protection of us. And God, as we just look at Hezekiah here today, about how you used him, uh, not just to turn his individual heart towards you, but God, how you used him to cause the turning of, of an entire nation. God, help each and every one of us. God, whoever it is that you've placed in our life, whoever you've placed in our heart that, that we're called to, to lead spiritually, help us to be intentional with that today. Whether that's just a quick text or a phone call, something to encourage others in their walk with you. Uh, God, we know that, that you will lead us and guide us. Help us to listen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And I'll see you 24 hours from now, right back here in the beautiful pines uh, on the Daily Race tomorrow. Love you guys. Have a great day.